Welcome to this Wise Owl tutorial on testing conditions in Power Automate. Here's what you'll learn during the tutorial. We'll begin by a quick reminder of the example we're working on. This is the third in a three part series of tutorials. Then we'll look at how you can add conditions to a flow, how you can terminate a flow early if it fails a condition. We'll test both the two paths just to check there's no magic going on. And finally, I'll show the switch action, which allows you to test between mul multiple cases. But that's enough of looking at me. I'm going to vanish and let's get started. So for the final part of this three tutorial series, we're going to look at conditions. Here's what we've got to so far with our example. We're reading in the number of OneDrive files, we're reading the number of SharePoint files, and we arrive with some results, which contains two variables. There's a variable called OneDrive files count, which is how many files we found in the OneDrive folder. And there's a variable called SharePoint recipe count, which is the number of files we found in the SharePoint folder. And what we now want to do is compare them to see whether they're equal or not. If they are equal, then we'll just carry on. Everything's hunky dory. But if they're not equal, we'll send ourselves an email warning that there's a discrepancy and then terminate the flow. So here's what this will look like. We'll have a condition in saying, if the number of SharePoint files equals the number of OneDrive files, then what we'll do is carry on down the yes part of this condition and carry on and just show some output at the end. But if it isn't, we'll go down the no part of this condition, send ourselves an email warning us what the problem is, and then terminate the flow. So that's what this example is going to do. So I think adding conditions is pretty simple. After I've got my results, I need to test them against each other, test the two variables, so I'll add a new step. I'm going to look at the control actions. We're going to add a condition. We'll also, later in this tutorial, look at switch and terminate too. So I'll add a condition in. And immediately I do that, it opens up not just a condition, but a true path and a false path too. My condition is that the SharePoint recipe count should be equal to, get rid of that, should be equal to the OneDrive file count. And if that's true, nothing will happen. If it's false, I'll add in an action to send an email to myself. I'm just gonna choose a send email action and I'll send an email to myself and call delegate 52, at least during the week. And my subject will be that there's a discrepancy between the different number of SharePoint and OneDrive files. And as to the body of my email, I've already got this above. My show results compose action uh, specified how many OneDrive files and how many SharePoint files there were. That's all I really need to know. So what I'll do is just put the output from the show results action in, and that should do. So now I could try running this, but just before I do that, I want to add an additional step at the bottom of the flow. I'll add in a compose action. It's not actually going to do anything. I'm really using it for debugging to show where my flow is going to. So I'll just put test in there because I need to have some inputs in. So if I now try running this flow, save and test, I'm expecting it to go down the right hand path because the number of files isn't equal. So if I try running that, and you can see from the symbols which appear, where it went to. It reached this condition, but it never ran the left-hand path. You can see there's no symbol to the left of it. It went down the right-hand path and then reached the compose action. So that's worked. So what I can now do is have a look at my emails. So if I go into Outlook and have a look at my emails, you should see I've got an email saying recipe mismatch, giving the details. So what I want to do now is to make sure that if the number of files isn't equal, I terminate the right-hand path after sending my email. So to do that, I can add an action at the bottom bit. The action is in the control group. It's called terminate, and it will have three possible statuses, failed, canceled, or succeeded. If I choose failed, I could fill in an error code and a message, and presumably something could pick up on this, but I would argue it's actually succeeded. It's successfully found there's a discrepancy in the number of files and sent me an email. And all I want to do is make sure it doesn't carry on and run the rest of the flow. And terminate will do that. So let's see if this has worked. If I now try running this, so if I 
save and test it. And then when it appears, if I click on the run flow button, then when I look at the output of this, you should see that that was a condition being executed. That's what that strange orange symbol was for, which took me by surprise. You can see that it hasn't run the compose action. I may need to just zoom in on this so you can see it. There's a black cross. So it went down the right hand path, reached the terminate, state, terminate statement and then stopped. So for the sake of completeness, I'm now going to prove that this works if I go down the left hand path. I don't want you thinking I'm fiddling things. So I'm going to go to my SharePoint uh, drive and so could you and we'll delete the lasagna file. So you've now got two files in the same uh, in each of the two folders. Actually, they're different. The OneDrive contains lasagna, the power, sorry, the SharePoint one contains veggie chili, proving what a useless flow this is, but hopefully it's useful for teaching Power Automate. If I test this, I won't actually see whether it's gone down the yes path. I won't see an icon here. So what I'm going to do just to make things crystal clear is add a cheeky little compose action on the left hand side, which will just say the word test. So that's just for debugging purposes. So I can cl clearly see that it's gone down the left hand path. So if I now try running this, save and test, and then if, when it appears, if I click on the run flow button, and then done, and have a look at the output from it, you can see that if I expand the condition, it's gone down the left hand path. The icons on the right show that it never went down this path. The one on the left showed it did go down this side, and it went on and finished and ran the compose action at the bottom. So it really was working. So as the final part of this tutorial, uh, I want to show you an alternative to using a condition, which is using the more flexible switch statement. Although whether it's a good thing to do is, uh, well, well, we'll see. So I've rewound the clock back to the beginning of the tutorial, and I'm going to add a new step at the bottom, which instead of using a condition from the control set of actions, uses a switch statement instead. And the idea behind this is I can test a value here and see whether it's zero, one, two, etc. So what I'm thinking is if the number of files difference between OneDrive and SharePoint is zero, I'll do nothing. If it's one, I'll send a slightly worried email. If it's two, I'll send a panicky email. And anything more than that, I'll send a, a distraught email. So the first thing I need to do is put my expression in here. And as we'll see, this actually isn't as simple as you may think. So what I'm going to do is put the OneDrive file count, and I'm going to subtract from that the SharePoint recipe count. And that should give me the difference between the two files. If it's zero, I'll do one thing. But I also want to add another condition. So I'm going to click on this plus to add a case in. And if it's one, I'll do something else. And maybe if it's two, I'll do something else. And here you see the limitations of the switch function. It's almost impossible to display visually. The more actions or more cases I type in or add, the wider I'll have to scroll to see them all. And it just completely distorts your view and there doesn't seem to be much you can do about this. So I'm actually going to delete that third case I just added to revert back to where I was with just two cases. You can't delete the default statement, which is a good thing in my opinion. You always have to have an else statement of what happens if the other conditions aren't true. So now what I could do is I could add a step at the bottom here. And what I'm going to do is add a compose action just to prove that it's gone on to the the bottom task if you like and i'll just put the word test in there so let's now try testing this and see if it works before we test it it's worth thinking what should happen i've re left the number of files to be equal in the two cases so i think it should go down this left hand path because the number the difference between the number of files is at zero let's see if that's what happens so i'm going to try saving this and running it i'm pessimistic about this mostly because i tried it earlier and what you can see is that it actually went down the right hand path. It didn't go down that path. It didn't go down that path. It went down the default path. And the reason is that the expression didn't evaluate to zero. It evaluated to two minus two. All it does is takes the value of the variables and substitutes them in. It doesn't actually evaluate that expression. To do that, you're going to need to create an expression. So I'm afraid we need to come out of this, go back to our condition get rid of what I typed in and create an expression instead. 
So to do this, I can go to my expression and I can refer to my variables, except I can't at the moment. If I were to click on dynamic content and choose a variable, what it would do is just add it into my on box. What I want to do instead is add it into my expression and it's not listed there. One trick is to type in an equal sign. And the moment you do that, you can then go back to your dynamic content and click on one of your variables and it would add in the expression, saving you having to type it out. So that's a huge advantage. I then need to subtract from it the other expression. And you may think my job is done. I can then choose OK and it says the expression isn't valid. Perhaps that's because I put the equal sign, which I don't really need. No, not a bit of it. The reason for that is you can't put one number minus the other. You have to use the sub function instead. So what I need to do is type SUB there. And you can see it's going to subtract one number from another. It's got the wonderful word subtrahend, which I must admit I had never heard before. And the second argument, so I'll put a comma in there, is the thing I'm subtracting. And then I need to close the brackets. So perhaps not quite as easy as you might have first thought. But now if I run this, I'm hoping it will go down the left hand path because the difference is actually zero. So I'll just run my flow. And if I look at the output from it, you can see. So switch is uh, ideal for when you have a number of mutually exclusive possibilities, but it does mean you end up with very wide flows. And for that reason alone, I try to avoid it.